understand dystopia and the dystopian genre in literature, we need to go back in time to 1516. That's when English author Thomas More wrote a novel about an ideal society called Utopia. Utopia is a word that More invented. It's derived from Greek. Topos means place. The prefix could be pronounced two different ways, so it could mean two things. Utopia, a good place, or utopia, no place. A utopia has come to mean an ideal or perfect place, but also a place that perhaps does not exist. What are some characteristics of a perfect place? In a utopia, people live together in harmony and peace. There is a stable economy. People are healthy, and if something does happen, they all have access to health care. There is also access to education. Everyone has a fulfilling job as well as free time, and enough money for anything they want or need. The environment is clean, and nature is everywhere. Beauty surrounds you. Food is plentiful, nutritious, and delicious. There is freedom of thought and action, and equality and tolerance between races and genders. Religious tolerance is also a factor, or sometimes there is no religion. Can a utopia really exist? Consider the Russian Revolution and the emergence of communism. This was called a worker's paradise. Everyone was supposed to be equal. Did this actually work? Sadly, no. It was a good idea, but human nature unfortunately led to corruption. A commune is a community of people living together, having common values and beliefs, as well as shared property and possessions. During the 1960s, the hippie movement experimented with communal living in the hopes of fostering peace, love, and equality. But unfortunately, no job means no money, so no health care, no food, and so on. Once again, the concept is admirable, but in reality, it didn't work. Perhaps utopia can exist, albeit on a small scale. A kibbutz is a utopian community in Israel traditionally based on agriculture, and it is a combination of socialism and Zionism. Today there are over 200 kibbutzes in Israel. People live and work there, and children are educated on the kibbutz, and they are self-sufficient through trade with other kibbutzes. Cloistered religious communities are another example of small-scale and possibly imperfect utopia. Historically, monasteries have been both self-sufficient and prosperous. People of similar background and belief live together in harmony and peace in a monastery or convent. But there is an internal power system, so members are not truly equal. There are many rules, and certainly individual thought or an expression is not encouraged. Of course, everyone is the same gender and the same religion. There is one more utopia to consider. Throughout the world, almost all religions promise some kind of life after death with the concept of heaven or paradise, undeniably a perfect place. But does it really exist?